Okay, so I've, I've brought in three rough cutouts of things I want to composite together for the head. And we want to, I'm going to use a metaphor over and over again uh, in making our creature composite, our creature design. It's a lot like assembling a car. So we're going to build some of the elements separately and then bring them into the big, big assembly and weld them onto the chassis. So what's nice is by having all this room, I can build the head in this area and then bring it all as one part onto the chassis of the body. And because the head has a lot of internal overlaps, it's a good place to start. So there's one other element I wanted to composite in for the head, and that's the bill. You know, obviously I'm, I'm doing Psyduck. I have a few different references of bills. That one's nice and sharp, but just so dark. And when it's just so dark and doesn't reflect a lot of light, there's not a, a lot of chance to bring color into it. And I, I know I want color in it. So I'm gonna bring this one in instead. And unfortunately that bill is just about the right size. I wish it were bigger than I needed. So I'm going to cut it out with some overlap. And that's why I have multiple options. Let's see how big this one is when I bring it in. That one's a better size, right? But it's not quite the right angle. So I still think I like the lighting and the angle of this one better. But then I also have this one to kind of help color it and fill it in. But these are the real pixels I have. So if I enlarge it, it's uh, only going to reduce in quality. But this photo is larger, but it's actually not as sharp anyway. So what I'm going to do is scale everything to fit this, this image. Now this bill is the one I need the least overlap around. So I'm going to go ahead and do a pretty tight cut out of it. Not perfect, especially where the fur is. I want to leave some overlap and I like the little white patches around the eyes. But definitely in this bottom part, I know all of that's going to get trimmed closer. I like that really slight lower lower part of the bill. And then I really like this little jaw that's attached. I actually like all this fur here. So if I want to add a little bit more, I just hold down shift while I use my lasso. Make sure I'm not leaving things out. And I'm just doing this all with a trackpad on a laptop. But if you have a tablet, sometimes that can make selections a little bit easier. Come on. Come on, Photo P, keep up with me. All right. So if this is my cutout, I'm going to go ahead and put this on top. And then I'm going to bring my other references behind it and scale them down. What just happened? Okay. 
Okay, so my bill is on top. I have auto select turned on so I can bring these down. And then use control T to scale these different items. Gonna enlarge this just a little bit. So the head is going to be the focal point of your creature. So it's like assembling the engine of the car. And I'm not a big car guy, but I did enjoy this movie called uh, Ford versus Ferrari. And it's a lot about building cars. And one thing they had in that movie was the difference between a hand-built car by Ferrari and what you know Ford was doing at the time. And Ferrari has one person work on the engine and build every part of it. And so they put all of their attention into the engine before they do anything else. And so that's kind of the metaphor for the head for a creature design. The head kind of tells you everything you need about the creature. And because we have compositing skills, we don't need to take the photo as it is. We can use warp and distort. Creatures are organic things. As long as you don't overdo it, you can play with lining them up in different ways, scaling them in different ways. So I've got that. Now I want to bring in this one. And just to help with the overlap, I might cut it out a little bit closer. I like the, the choker it has of white. Maybe I can incorporate that. And I want to bring that. between these two layers and maybe on top of everything just so I can get the right shape and space. Now what I'm going to try to do is just use the color from this. So I'm using warp and distort and trying to get it to match the anatomy. I'm going to take the opacity down a little bit so I can see where the bills kind of line up. I'm working on building the engine here. Control T. Warp gives me the most control. So I think I might want a yellow band down the middle of this bill. And then some of those green notes in the um, in the head, and then definitely little hints of this white choker underneath. All right, so I can now push that down in between.
I think I still want to use these eyes, right? That placement of the eyes. So really quickly, one thing I can do is do some internal compositing right on this layer. So I don't want that eye in that place. So this is just a really quick and dirty. I'm going to take a chunk of the texture of that creature. I'm going to hit Action Key J, Command J on a Mac, to make a little duplicate, make a little patch. Then I'm going to cover up the eye. And then I'm going to Control T, grow it. This is just like internal compositing clouds or texture fills, except I'm keeping it at 100% opacity. Then I'm going to use my eraser at 0% hardness, pretty large, to take off at 100% opacity, take off those hard edges around my little patch. Now there are tools for this in Photoshop that we'll be learning eventually, but I don't want us to over rely on them yet. And th those are called healing brush tools and patch tools. But right now, notice that you can do all of that just through what we already know about internal compositing. And then if I want to be really good about it using skills I've already learned, I can even burn it a little bit to match the lighting. Again, burn is to darken the exposures that are there. I can take the hardness all the way down, make the size a little bit bigger, only work in the midtones, and use an exposure of less than 30. All right. So then how can I blend it in? I'm going to be using the green. You see how that patch is kind of changing the, the tone of that gray seal? I'll be using the green in that way to give some color and interest to the gray. But the seal's head is the one I'm mostly going to use. There's lots of ways to use compositing here. Now the eyes. Like goggles. I'm going to shrink those down. So control T. Hold down shift. As much as possible, it's nice to get kind of the distance between things and those structures. from your reference, but sometimes you'll need to distort them and even separate them out individually. This could be true for, for arms, for eyes, for wings. So sometimes such things are necessary. Okay, so now I've done a rough kind of layering of all of these components, right? to get a rough idea of what my realistic Psyduck's head will look like. Here's the beauty though of doing this assembly, car assembly kind of metaphor. All of these layers now, except for my background sketch, all of these layers are part of the head. So that's already one, two, three, four, five different layers I'm using. So what I'm going to do is make a folder. So next to the little uh, new new layer icon that looks like a post-it, next to that is a folder. If I put that folder in and I just label that folder the head, and then I move all of these layers into it by selecting them all and then just dragging them into that folder. Try it again, a little tricky with the trackpad. Why? Start with just one layer. So you drag and drop, should go into the folder. Come on. <laughs> 